Hey dudes, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, I am gonna share my top secret hot sauce recipe. I said I would share this with you when I used it on my fried tacos a few weeks ago, and here I am, making good on my promises. but the most important one is just the type of chili that we're using, which is a chili de arbol. That means tree pepper, and they look like this. They're long and skinny, and they have these long stems, and they're called tree pepper, I think, just because the bush that they grow on um, kind of resembles a tree. I've never actually seen one, but I've read about that. I think you can find these at most grocery stores in the U.S. If you can't, something that's comparable, that, um, that it might be a little bit more uh, easily found is like a... Japanese um, dried chili or a chile japones. Chiles japones, is that my, am I pronouncing that right? Chiles japon, Japanese chilies, but they're shorter and fatter than the chiles de arbol. So compare. Um, I think that the chiles de arbol are a little bit more um, flavorful. It's a, such a vague word. They're um, sort of grassy and earthy and floral. Um, and I think they're a little bit hotter than these, but these these will work too. Um, but I have the chiles de arbol, so I'm gonna use those. And you want uh, about three ounces of dried, and you're just gonna break the stems off and drop them into a heat-proof bowl. I like to use glass because it keeps the heat in longer than a metal bowl would, but metal will work too if that's what you have. I guess if you wanted to remove the seeds to make a less hot hot sauce, you could, but why bother? Just go buy some paste if that's the case. All right, so I'm gonna pretend like I did this whole bag in here. We're gonna add some peeled garlic cloves. If you wanna smash them first to peel them, that's fine. I just compulsively try to peel them without smashing them. I'm gonna cover this with some boiling water. All right, you just want, it'll probably take like three or four cups of water to cover three ounces of dried chilies. And they'll float at first and <coughs> don't, inhale that steam because it's already really pungent. They'll float at first, but as they sort of become waterlogged, they will begin to sink. Um, I like to cover it with a plate or something else to keep the heat in, and then let them sit here for a good three hours or something until they're, um, they've absorbed a lot of the water and the water is cooled off. And I have some that I already started soaking, and I'll show you what that looks like, just like this. Look, cool magic trick. Just keep your eyes up here, folks. No, just kidding. All right, so this is what, oh, I missed a stem. This is what three ounces of soaked chiles de arbol look like. They smell really good. I wish I could describe it to you, um, but uh, my vocabulary is not that good. Okay, so I'm gonna get my blender out and we're almost done with the salsa. All right, so we're just gonna transfer these soaked chilies into the blender um, and I leave the soaking water behind just because um, there's probably some flavor in there, but there's also probably a lot of dust and things like that. And you can see there's a few garlic cloves in here too. I put the garlic in already. Okay, just use your hands. Sometimes that's easier. Hot sauce, cause it's America's condiment. I did read like five years ago, I think, that salsa had finally overtaken ketchup as like America's best-selling condiment. So that's interesting. I'm gonna add some water. This is water that has been previously boiled. I'm not like, we're not going to like, uh, can this the proper way, um, but I'm using the boiling water soak is a little bit of a way to sort of clean everything, and then using um, boiling water or previously boiled water will keep it a little bit cleaner too. Apple cider vinegar, about a quarter cup, and some salt. And this is it's kind of a lot of salt, a couple teaspoons of salt, um, but. It's necessary. Okay, now carefully, 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 we're gonna blend this up. The chilies might still be a little warm. The water might still be a little warm. So whenever you're blending things that are warm or hot, and be really careful because the combination of heat and the movement builds, builds up pressure inside the blender. And if you're not holding the lid down, it can like explode off. That would be a huge mess to clean up. Not to mention it could blind you. Okay, so I'm gonna Leave this sort of loose so that it's a little bit of a vent. Cover it with a embarrassingly ragged dishcloth. Jeez. Um, 
and just blend it up till it's smooth. The color is another thing I love about these chilies. This is beautiful, bright orange red. Give it a gentle sniff. Stick my very clean finger in there. Cool, yeah. Um, I was just tasting for salt. I think it's good. Now we're going to age this. I've been working on this recipe for like over five years. In the first few times I did it, I would pour it directly into like a little narrow mouthed um, salsa jar, not taking into account that it ferments a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is pour it into uh, a mason jar or something, and I'll probably need a couple of these, but um, this will work for now. Leave about an inch or so at the top. And then I'm gonna cover it with, I'm gonna use paper towel, but if you have cheesecloth or something like that, um, that'll be good too. And this will let the air out as it ferments a little bit, but keep any bugs out also. That was a, okay, I thought that would sound cooler when I said it. Okay, so then you can put this in a cool, dark place for about a week, and um, if there's any like bubbles or anything that show up, that's totally fine. It should sort of stop bubbling after about a week. And at that point, you can funnel it into some smaller salsa jars. And this is one that I made. I dated it February. I made a big batch in February. This is the last of it. And I just transferred it into here, stored at room temperature. It keeps for like at least six months, apparently. Oh, I should taste this for you so I can um, show you that it's not poisonous. Hang on. Chips. Let's get a chip. And it keeps its beautiful color. And it's just lovely. It's so good on tacos or chips or anything. Mm. Chips and salsa, dude. It's like one of my favorite foods of all time. Mm. Just to be fair, I'll do a little dip in this brand new stuff just to sort of give you a flavor comparison. So this one is hotter. The new one is hotter right off the bat, but this one has a lot more flavor. So you can totally serve it right away, but it does get a little bit better as it ages. I hope you enjoy this. I hope that you try it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You can click that little red button right down there. I post new videos every week. Coming up next is a video with my friend Carlos. It's one of his salsa recipes. This is from our Mexican homestyle cooking course that we did last year. I'll post a link up here and a link down below if you want more information on that. In the meantime, please enjoy this salsa recipe. All right. First salsa. Yeah, salsa borracha. And you know why borracha? Yes, because of that. <laughs> Gonna put some beer and some salsa and then she's never heard of that. Well, this is your lucky day. It's delicious. <laughs> so we have some of ingredients here. Tomatoes, onions, garlic, chiles. Use as many chiles as you want. I like it hot. She likes it hot. So we're mm -hmm. gonna use a lot of chiles. And we have a moncajete. If you don't have one, you should get one. It's really fun. Make sure it's made out of stone and not concrete, though. Exactly. You don't wanna eat that concrete. <laughs> Shit, no. <laughs> Excuse me, more. All right, so we're gonna get going. We're gonna turn on comal high, and we're gonna toast the ingredients there. And you could do this in a broiler if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, you can just put them in the oven in a pan and then. Or on the make, grill outside. Uh, on the grill good. outside, yeah. And just turn them over once in a while. I'm gonna use three garlic cloves. Oh yeah, mm. they turn, wow, it's way faster than when you broil it. Yeah. So I'm gonna heat up like a couple of tablespoons of oil yeah. in a little skillet. And we used jalapeno and three serranos? Uh, yeah, one jalapeno and three serranos. Okay. You can use habaneros if you want, but those mm -hmm. are really yeah. hot, yeah. We're doing, we're toasting these things. Mm, maybe we 
Michigan. Oh yeah, look at that. Getting good. You do want them to get soft. Take a little longer here with the onions and this, finish them up. All right, see the skin is coming off, so we know we're getting there. And do you want to keep the skins on? The true recipe wants you to take it off, but again, my personal choice is to leave it so you, you, you have the char parts of the tomato in it and right. it tastes really good yeah, actually. Yeah, it's a lot of flavor there. Yeah. The skin. It's sweet and smoky, it's good. Smells sweet. The tomatoes, the yeah. sugars are really caramelizing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be good. Good stuff. And they're still pretty firm. Yeah, you want your salsa to be chunky. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I like the mocajete. You know, you can use a blender, but uh, just get some chunks of tomato, chunks of onions and garlic. It just tastes better. Yeah. So you can use maybe a food processor if you didn't have yeah. a mocajete. Yeah. This up. We want the onions to get a little softer and the garlic as well. The same with the chiles. All right. So the way I go with this, well, let me tell you about home. <laughs> There's a um, restaurant. I think it was Santo Coyote. I can't remember. Um, they used to make uh, salsas on your table in a tiny mocajete. In that restaurant, they will heat the little mocajete, add some oil in it, and then grind the ingredients. They haven't toasted. I don't, I can't really remember how they carry that stuff around. They have like a little burner with the stuff oh, wow. already um, smoked, charred, and all yeah. that. And just grind it on your table, and you have a little bit of fresh salsa. Cool, so we're going to try to do that here with yeah. some hot oil. And I'm going to start grinding the garlic first, then onions, then, to then chiles, and then tomatoes at the end. That's it. That's good. That's good. That's good uh enough. I don't want to burn myself. I'm going to add a little piece of onion to just going to spread it around the your, muscles. your muscles and your energy. Oh, yeah, look at that. again get a little bit of cilantro leaves just break them up put them in a dab of Worcester sauce or whatever you call that <laughs> I, like your, I like Worcester sauce it's so much easier to say than Worcestershire yeah that, I think that's how they do it in New England I'm not sure you can correct me but I think New England there's this Worcester Worcester, Worcester. Worcester. all right and Cerveza. So, since our uh, salsa has a lot of uses for the tomatoes, you just want to top it off and then we get a spoon and mix it up. You don't have to use it all. All right. Oh, and I'm forgetting something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mix it all up. Add a little bit of lime juice. Yeah, let's get a chip here. Wow. Just go for it. So you kind of scoop up some big chunks. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheers, cheers. Oh my God. Mmm. Told you, right? The bitterness of the beer mm -hmm. with the roasty, like charred. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see when we were saying where they heat up the mocha head, mm -hmm. like this hot, this would be really good hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hot salsa for, yeah. and would you, is it just for chips or tacos? Or? Uh, for tacos, and you can still take this. It's kind of heavy, so I don't want to do it right now. You can take everything out and kind of do like a sofrito in the pan with hot oil. Pour the salsa on and then just bring it back to the mocajete. And that's the finish up, the 
toge, but okay. I like it like this. Yeah. Better. Yeah. yeah. This is delicious. Yeah. Ooh, thanks, man. Thank you. More salsa's coming up. Yeah. Thanks, Carlos. Remember, I'll post information up here and down below for how to get our course where you can get some more um, of Carlos's family recipes. And up next is a salsa verde recipe from my own collection, Bon Appetit. First step is to prepare the tomatillos and get them in the broiler. So this is what a tomatillo looks like. Uh, I always get questions about these whenever I cook with them on my show because I know they're not available everywhere in the world. Like a lot of parts of Europe don't have them, but um, I don't know. I think most places do. I don't know. You can also find them canned uh, and you can totally use canned ones if you find those. So they come like this. You want to find ones that are nice and firm and it's kind of a dark green. And if their little husks are completely filled, that's a good sign too. These are actually not related to tomatoes. They are related to gooseberries. If you've ever seen a gooseberry, then you will know immediately that they are very similar in appearance with this little papery husk. So underneath the husk is a slimy, sticky sort of sap. You can see my hands are kind of shiny. And you wanna rinse that off. So just over here with a little running water. Okay, and then once they're rinsed, we are gonna cut the big ones in half and put them on my little baking sheet here. And I'll show you what they look like inside. The inside they look very much like a gooseberry. See, it's like kind of a spongy, this picture just like diagram of a penis because it's got like that like spongy tissue. Anyway, um, enough about penises. <laughs> And like I said, if you are using canned ones, no need to roast because they're already cooked. You could just drain the liquid off and start grinding them up with the other ingredients. And then I'm also going to do my little serrano. I'm just going to cut the stem off. You could remove the seeds if you want a milder salsa, but you know I like it spicy. So I'm going to put this in the broiler for five to ten minutes until the tomatillos are nice and blistered and um, and soften, and they'll turn kind of like an olivey green instead of this nice bright green. While the tomatillos are broiling, we can start grinding up the rest of our ingredients. I'm gonna use my molcajete to grind everything up because I need to show her that she's more than just a really heavy thing that sits on my counter and collects dust and sometimes old garlic cloves. So you could totally use a blender or a food processor. So a little bit of diced uh, onion, some coarse salt, and I'm just gonna start pulverizing this. And the salt helps it get a little bit ground up. Add a little bit more onion, and also a couple cloves of garlic. A little more salt. You wanna add about a half a teaspoon of salt total. And then we grab the tomatillos. So, these are collapsed, prolapsed, and nice and black. I'm gonna toss a couple in, along with my serrano, which is also really nice and toasted. Okay, about three days later, just kidding, but it does take five or 10 minutes by hand. We've got a uh, salsa looking thing, a chunky little salsa. I'm gonna add some cilantro. I'm just gonna have to mince this up really finely. If you don't like cilantro, I think you'd be best off just leaving it out rather than trying to substitute any other herbs. Um, it's still a really, really good salsa even without the cilantro. And don't bother picking the leaves off because the stems actually have a ton of flavor. So I just do like a little small handful like that. Add that in. And a little bit of lime juice. You don't need too much, maybe just like a tablespoon because the tomatillos are a little bit sour too. Oh. 
Mmm. Zesty, it's light. It's got the perfect amount of spice for me. Like, it's spicy enough that you notice, but it's not so much that it overpowers everything else. Thank you, thank you, Hyla. Thank you very much for those three salsa recipes. I hope you guys like this little experimental compilation video. Again, don't forget to click down there to subscribe, and I will see you next week with more videos. Bye.